بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقال ربكم ادعوني أستجب لكم إن الذين يستكبرون عن عبادتي سيدخلون جهنم داخلين قال النبي صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الدعاء مخ العبادة إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته To all of my friends and colleagues, brothers and sisters listening to this broadcast being broadcast from SLMCC in Harrow and beyond. Today I wish to share with you a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam transmitted by Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi in his sahih. On one occasion, the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam mentioned the story of three individuals from the Banu Israel. Banu Israel is the nation to whom Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam and other prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were sent. The hadith is as follows that on one occasion three individuals were traveling and as part of their journey, as part of their travel, they were affected by heavy rain. And because it was very, the weather was not good, there was heavy rainfall, this forced them into a cave in a mountain. They took refuge in this cave to save themselves from the, the severe weather and the rain. It so happened that whilst they were in the cave, the mouth of the cave, the entrance to the cave was closed because a large rock fell as a result of which the entrance to the cave, the mouth of the cave closed and they were blocked. At that time, there was no, there were no mobile phones. There was no way of alerting anyone that there are three individuals here who require rescue. On the face of it, there was no, there, there was no means of them, them moving the rock because the rock was very large, very heavy. They were unable to move the rock. They could not have moved the rock. So on the face of it, it appeared as though that they had no exit. They, they, there was no rescue. And this cave was to become their grave. However, these three individuals were, were believers. They believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they made mashwara, they consulted one another. And this is a, a sunnah that especially at times of difficulties, at times of adversity, that a person takes advice from someone else, a person consults with his seniors, with his associates and proceeds accordingly. So these three individuals, they made mashwara amongst themselves and they said to one another, that uh, the only way that we can save ourselves from this disaster, from this problem that has befallen us, is that we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua is the only way that we can save ourselves from the problem that we find ourselves in. So they said to one another, Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
But don't just make dua generally. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the intercession of a deed. And not just any deed, but a deed that is special. A good deed that you have done only and solely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With total sincerity. Think of a deed in your life. They said to one another, whilst they were in this cave, think of a deed in your life that you commit, you undertook with ikhlas and sincerity and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the intercession of this deed. Make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve us from this problem through the blessing of that deed. So now the three individuals who are blocked in this cave who on the face of it don't have any route to exit this cave, no route to save themselves, they start and they make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of them says, فَقَالَ أَحَدُهُمْ اللَّهُمَّ كَانَ لِيَا بَوَانِ شَيْخَانِ كَبِيرًا That, oh Allah, I had two elderly parents. They were both elderly. And I was a shepherd. I would take the animals to graze. And it was my daily routine that I would return home. I would milk the animals. And then I would bring the milk to my parents. And make my parents drink the milk first. And thereafter I would attend to my family, my children and my spouse. And I would give them the milk to drink. But I would give priority to my parents. It so happened one day that I was delayed. I came home late at night. I milked the animals and when I came to my parents, they were asleep. They had fallen asleep. I did not like to wake them up. Because they had already fallen asleep, I thought that it is not appropriate to wake them up. So I waited and I waited. And whilst I waited, my children were awake. And because my children were awake, they, they wanted the milk, they were crying. But because it was my practice to give priority to my parents, I waited and I waited and I waited until dawn emerged, until Fajr Salah time began. And then I first gave to my parents and then I gave to my children. Oh Allah! This is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa is narrating this story and this dua of these cavemen. So this person now makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, if you know and you do know that I did this only for your sake, I did not do this for anyone else. I only did this to please you. I only waited throughout the night to please you. Ya Allah, at that time my parents were asleep. It was possible for me to give the milk to my children to drink and then in the morning I could have then at that point give the milk to my parents but Ya Allah I waited and I waited and I waited only for your sake only for your to seek your pleasure if I did this only to seek your pleasure then remove from us the problem that we find ourselves in and he said Bring an opening to the cave through which we can see the sky. Rasulullah mentions, and this shows the power of dua. Dua is not to be underestimated. Rasulullah then mentions that as soon as this person made dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed or moved the rock slightly. The rock removed slightly, they were able to see the sky, but but it wasn't sufficient for them to exit the cave. They could see the sky, but it wasn't sufficient for them to exit the cave. Now the second person is making dua that oh Allah, I had a cousin sister who was very beloved to me, and I wanted to commit sin with her. However, she would not allow me to commit sin with her. Unless and until I would give her 
100 gold coins, 100 dinars. So I worked hard and I made an effort and I gathered these 100 dinars. However, when I, and I gave her the 100 dinars and as I was about to commit the sin, she said, she said to me, Ittaqillaha wa la tafuddil khatam. Fear Allah and do not violate the seal. Fear Allah and do not violate the seal. Do not commit the sin. At that time, Ya Allah, there was only me and her. There was no one to stop us, stop me from committing this sin. And I had already given her the hundred dinars. I had fulfilled my part of the pledge. There was nothing stopping me from committing the sin. But my cousin sister mentioned your name and she said, Ittaqillah, fear Allah. At that time, there was no one watching. I stood up, I moved away. I left the money with her. Similar to the story of Al-Kifl, which I shared with you uh, last week. Oh Allah, if I did this only for your sake, then remove from us this problem that we find ourselves in and grant us some more opening. The Prophet ﷺ mentions that the second caveman, as soon as he made this dua, the, the dua in which he referred to an action of his which he did only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created some more opening. The rock moved further. They were able to see more of the sky, more daylight. But again, it wasn't sufficient for them to exit the cave. Now the third person, the third caveman makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says that, Ya Allah, I had an employee. And my employee, I employed him in exchange of certain amount of, uh, certain amount of goods. However, he refused to take the salary one day and he left. He left and he went away. I decided to invest his salary that was left, his uncollected salary. I invested it in some land and eventually that grew and it grew. The investment yielded so much that there was land and there were many, many animals and so on. This employee then returned. And he, after some time, and he said to me that, uh, give me my salary that you owe me, return it to me, give it to me. So this person said to him that, can you see all these animals, all this land, all of this is yours, all of this belongs to you. So the employee said to the employer that, don't joke with me, just give me my salary and let me go. So the employer said no. I'm not joking with you. All of this belongs to you. Your salary, I invested it. And all of this that you see, all of this land, all of these animals, all of these assets, all of this belongs to you. He says to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, if I did this only for your sake, I only did this for your sake. The employee was not aware. No one was aware. If I had given the employee his salary, he would have been more than happy. But I was true to you, O Allah. Ya Allah, I only did this to please you and for your sake. If I did this with ikhlas and sincerity and only for your sake, then relieve from us the difficulty, the problem that we are in. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam mentions that as soon as this person made this dua, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed this large rock from the entrance of the cave more and they were able to exit the cave. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, this story is not a myth. It is a true story meant, transmitted by Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi in his sahih. And this is meant, and this hadith is transmitted from Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. It is, it, is it is a true story and it demonstrates the, the importance 
It demonstrates the importance and the power of dua. It demonstrates the importance and the effect and the power of ikhlas and sincerity. Ponder that these three individuals did not mention their salah or did not mention their zakah or did not mention their other deeds. One talked about his duty and his obedience to his parents. One talked about a sin that he abstained from. And one talked about the rights of employees. Being good to one's employees. So they thought about certain deeds that they had done in their lives with ikhlas and total sincerity. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam mentions in a hadith, Al-A'malu bin niyat Actions are rewarded according to intentions. Sometime an action, a deed may appear to be small. But in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is so powerful, so powerful that it can tilt the scale in the scales of the hereafter due to ikhlas and sincerity. Sincerity is very, very powerful and should not be underestimated. Another lesson that we learn from this hadith is what a person should do at the time of adversity, at the time of a calamity, at the time of a problem. Like the problem that we are faced with today, COVID-19. The problems that are arising as a result of COVID-19, unemployment, and so on. At this time, we need to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another very important lesson that we learn from this hadith is that if a person is, is in a calamity, in a problem, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوْ حَسْبُهُ Having tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, turning towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, having the utmost trust and yaqeen and the faith that Allah subhanahu no matter how great the calamity, no matter how great the problem, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one and the only one who can even though it might appear to be impossible, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can make the impossible possible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who can make what appears to be not possible possible. The moving of the rock would appear to be impossible. Yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it possible. My dear brothers, my dear sisters, this is these are some of the lessons that we can draw from this story and incident of the three cavemen who made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a result Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removed the entire rock from the entrance of the mouth they were able to exit the cave and the problem that they were they found themselves in that problem was removed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as through the power of dua wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran and your Lord said, call out to your Lord. I shall respond to your call. I shall accept your call. I shall accept your supplication. I shall accept your dua. And what better time, my dear brothers, than now, few minutes before iftar, to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to remove from us this COVID-19 that we find ourselves in, to grant us ikhlas, to accept our ibadah, to grant us sabr, patience, to give us the ability to do shukr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the bounties that he has given us. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the tawfiq to supplicate for our brothers and sisters who have passed away in COVID-19. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Jannatul Firdaus. Those who are in hospitals, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them Shifa. One of our very dear and elder and learned scholars, Allama Khalid Mahmood, who resides in Manchester. He is currently in hospital and uh, his, his, his condition is 
is, is not very good at this moment in time. He fell down and there was an operation and we have received a message from his family members that his condition, he is not so well. Therefore, humble request that we make dua for him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shifa. And all those brothers and sisters of ours who are in hospitals or in their homes who are not well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them afia, grant them shifa. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanallahi wa bihamdi. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdi. Nashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت أقدامنا وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. We have one minute, inshaAllah, before we break our fast. May Allah accept your sacrifice, your late night prayers, your Quran, your tasbih, your dhikr, your charity. May Allah accept all of that, inshaAllah. And most of all, may Allah accept your fast. Bismillah. Allahumma inni laka sumtu wa bika amantu wa alayka tawakkaltu wa ala rizkika aftu. وعليك توكلت وعلى رزقك أفطرت يا الله I fasted for you and I believe in you and my trust in you and we break our fast with your sustenance بسم الله
أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله الصلاة الصلاة في بيوتكم حيا على الفلاح حيا السلام عليكم